Hello friends, this video on atom and molecules part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we know the atom's size. That atoms are very small in size. We know that physical property of any matter is determined by atom. Any matter you see it has atom in it. We know all these things about atom. We also know how to represent atom. For example, calcium is Ca, oxygen is O, sodium is Na, potassium, uh, potassium is K, uh, chlorine is Cl, hydrogen is H. We know all these things. Let's see how heavy is the atomic atom. See, Dalton atomic theory has clearly told that each element each element or each element atom has unique mass right some are heavy some are light for example oxygen is heavy hydrogen is light and we'll show you how okay now this theory the atomic theory could explain the law of constant proportion example carbon plus oxide is equal to co2 so this this theory has told that when carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide it is always in the constant proportion for example 3 gram of carbon will react with 4 gram of oxygen to form 7 gram of carbon dioxide this is the experimental data it is always in this proportion or you multiply everything by 2 6 gram of carbon will react with 8 gram of carbon dioxide to form 14 gram of carbon dioxide sorry 8 gram of oxygen to form 14 gram of carbon dioxide these things were known right with this we can actually find relative atomic mass we are talking about 1850s era where actual atomic mass was difficult to find now we're using the instruments by physics we can actually find the actual atomic mass but that time it was very difficult it was impossible to find the actual atomic mass but it was okay to find the relative atomic mass for example if you see carbon plus as i told three gram of let's ignore this part now three gram of carbon reacts with four gram of oxygen to give carbon dioxide this is a balanced reaction if you see in this reaction n carbon molecules will react with n oxygen molecules to give n carbon co2 right because if you see it's all balanced it's all n n so n carbon molecules is 3 gram i can write n or n c atom is 3 grams and similarly n c n o2 molecules or n c I guess the oxygen atoms is 4 gram. So with this you can say that oxygen is heavier because the same number of carbon atom is 3 gram, the same number of oxygen atom is 4 gram. That means oxygen is heavier. Hope you are following. See 3 grams of carbon, 4 grams of oxygen gives 4 gram of 7 gram of carbon dioxide. This is experimental data. This is experimental data. Right now, with this, we conclude that in this reaction, n molecules of or n atoms of carbon is reacting with n atoms of oxygen to form n molecules of carbon dioxide. This is actually a molecule. So, n molecules or atom of carbon is 3 grams, and n atom or molecule of oxygen is 4 gram that means oxygen atoms are heavier than carbon dioxide or then carbon sorry so with that actually you can tell which atom is heavy which atom is light just one experiment and to find the relative atomic mass one atomic mass has to be uh, taken as one amu or one one unit so what chemists did was they i mean they had option they could choose because they, we have hundreds plus atoms and we have to uh, take one as the reference so you could choose hydrogen as unit 
or you can choose oxygen as one unit or carbon as unit. They opted to choose hydrogen as one unit. So if you choose hydrogen as one unit, you'll actually see that oxygen comes out to be uh, 16 unit, carbon comes out to be 12 unit, and all these are experimental data. With this, the concept of atomic mass came. We'll talk about it later. Just understand from this slide that we concluded that the oxygen atom is heavier than carbon atom using this particular experimental data and Dalton's theory. Okay. okay. So let's see the history of atomic mass. See, in 1803, John Dalton, he suggested actually, because that was the time he, he, he coined the term atomic mass. Atomic mass term was not there. He was the one who gave this term atomic mass. He suggested that mass of hydrogen atom to be one unit. This was his suggestion, Dalton. Okay, so he suggested let's consider hydrogen as one unit and that is a natural unit for atomic weight. But there was a problem. See all these, if hydrogen is considered as one unit and I have to find let's suppose unit of sodium or carbon or let's suppose chlorine, then I actually have to react all these things with hydrogen because this is my base. But Hydrogen does not react with everything. In fact, hydrogen does not react with most other elements. For example, if I am to react sodium and hydrogen, I don't know how it will react. Carbon and hydrogen will form methane, but you need some high temperature and pressure. So hydrogen was ruled out. Why? Because to determine, to determine the relative atomic mass of other elements other elements other elements has to react with hydrogen right but that doesn't happen why hydrogen was chosen? Because it was the lightest element, lightest atom, so that was the natural choice. So, what to do? Now they found that oxygen is something that reacts with everything pretty easily. Carbon plus oxygen, hydrogen plus oxygen gives water, right? Carbon plus oxygen is CO2. Anything easily burns. Reaction of oxygen with something is nothing but burning reaction. It is very easy to burn something. So they thought, let's take oxygen as the base unit. When oxygen, hydrogen, if, if hydrogen is considered as one unit, oxygen value came out to be 16 unit experimentally. Right? Let's assume the Dalton theory itself. If hydrogen is considered as one unit, oxygen came out to be 16 unit because one gram of oxygen reacts with 16 gram of, sorry, one gram of hydrogen reacts with 16 gram of H2, sorry, this is H2 plus half of two is H2O. So, 2 grams of uh, oxygen will actually react with uh, 16 grams of, very sorry, and this is 2 grams react with 16 grams, 18 grams, yeah. This is experimental data, anyway. So, this was experimental data 2 grams of hydrogen react with. 16 grams of oxygen to give 18 grams of water. Right? So with this, here we have two hydrogen, here you have half, half oxygen. So with this, it, is, it was concluded that oxygen is 16 times heavier than hydrogen. Atom or oxygen atom is 16 times heavier than hydrogen atom. So, with this reaction, it was found that again, okay, because 
it is actually 1 and it's 2 and that's how they react. So now and since oxygen reacts with other substance, so oxygen has to be taken as base. So Ostwald recommended, was also a very popular scientist, he recommended 1 by 16 weight of oxygen to be considered as standard unit of atomic weight and he called that as atomic mass unit AMU. So 1 by 16 weight of oxygen let's consider that as standard atomic mass unit. Okay. So then this 1 by 16 weight of oxygen became the reference and all other atomic mass unit was formed. But there was a problem. Science progressed and they found that oxygen has three isotopes 16, 17 and 18. In fact oxygen 16 is almost 99.7% and these are very few but oxygen had three isotopes that created some problems right so which one to choose would we choose 16 or 17 or 18 or the average of all these three plus science was more advanced in fact physics now physics advanced a lot the physicist now can actually find that mass of a single atom using spectrometer so there is something called spectrometer that came into picture this physics physicists they invented spectrometer and with this spectrometer they could actually find the mass of a single individual atom okay and these chemists were actually using chemical reactions so there was an issue here right so we have chemist let me clear this so we had now chemists and we have physics so this chemist were actually using chemical reaction and this physicist we are using a tool I pay tool I can say and this tool spectrometer to find mass of single atom they could find the actual mass of single atom and they were using chemical reaction to find relative mass so there was a conflict since for chemists they are looking only for reaction with oxygen oxygen has so many isotopes right 16 17 18. So they were ignoring this fact of different isotopes and they were just reacting with oxygen and trying to find mass of other atom. But these physicists, physicists, they wanted standard based on specific isotopes. Right? Because they could actually, using spectrometer, say that O16 is different, O17 is different, O18 is different. Right? They could actually find that. They had the instrument. Now since they had a better instrument and they could actually find the actual atomic mass of a single atom, they were not ready to accept this concept. Also chemists were also not very comfortable with oxygen. Why? Because see oxygen is gas. Since it is all because of chemical analysis, they have to weigh it, weigh it right? And weighing a gas is difficult. So they also wanted something which is solid, solid in state. For example, um, carbon, right, or iron, or aluminium, or gold. So they wanted something which is solid as a base, right? A gold was one good contender, carbon was one good contender. So they were looking for something solid with which they can react something and get the final product, and they can easily weigh the gold and carbon. Also, physicists were not happy. Physicists were not happy because they were looking for atomic mass of specific isotopes. Right? Now, what happened was uh, all these physicists and chemists they met and they again decided that let's use C12 isotopes. Please note here, now since they were looking for specific isotope, this is C12 specific isotope, these guys were looking for solid. 
and his carbon is solid. So they told C12 isotope and 1 by 12 weight of C12 isotope be the base unit of reference. Now chemists were happy they got something solid to measure. Physicists were happy because this is C12 and also and C12 also has isotopes but 99% or more than 99% is actually C12 for any carbon. So any carbon you pick 99% it will have C12. So with that they are also happy. 1961 actually IUPAC declared C12 isotopes as standard reference for measuring atomic mass. Right. Actually gold was also a good contender and gold if you see there is no issue with isotope only because there is only one isotope. So they could have opted gold but there was two reasons why gold was not opted for. First gold does not react with many other many elements. So this chemical reaction involves reaction so that could not happen. Second gold is costly. So if they use gold as standard unit for reaction the consumption of gold in the lab will increase and the lab is and the gold is costly. So they opted for carbon because carbon is solid, carbon is cheap, not very costly and uh, easily available. Right? So any one was required and they opted for carbon. So that is the history of atomic mass. It all started with uh, Dalton's proposal of using hydrogen unit as one unit, atomic mass unit and then Ostwald proposed uh, oxygen that was used because oxygen reacted with so many other uh, elements and then it was found that oxygen has so many isotopes, oxygen 16, oxygen 17, oxygen 18 plus this physicists around the world they could actually measure the mass of a single atom using spectrometer. So they were looking for standard which is based on specific isotope, right? they don't want a general carbon or general oxygen. And chemists were also a little uncomfortable with oxygen because oxygen was a little difficult to weigh. So in 1961, IUPAC met and chemists and physicists, they agreed together and try and they told they'll use carbon-12 as a standard. They had option to use gold also, but gold was costly. So they used carbon-12 as a standard. Okay, so that is Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.